This is Leonard Nimoy. Fifty-nine years ago, a rebel chieftain arose in the Rift Mountains of Morocco. His name was Abdul Krim, and for five years he fought against the combined French and Spanish armies with remarkable success. He was a colorful, and some said a romantic sort of figure, a desert warrior. In fact, his exploits inspired a light opera of the time, The Desert Song. But while guerrilla warfare may be colorful, the color of flowing blood, it's not in the least romantic. For example, in 1921, the Spanish army in Morocco numbered 19,000 troops. Abdul Krim's furious tribesmen massacred 16,000 of them. Abdul Krim was a cruel and violent man, and he had an uncontrollable lust for blood. Well, Abdul Krim's been dead for 17 years now, but the legend lives on, and so does his family. One of his grandsons, more ruthless and even more violent, is trying to take over where Abdul Krim left off. He's in the Rift Mountains, gathering an army together, and he too has an uncontrollable lust for blood. John, this is Helen. I'm off to Morocco for a week or two. I want to interview Hamid Krim before he either gets too big to answer questions or gets killed off. I'll be out of touch for a while, but when I come back, it'll be with an exclusive... Good. Thank you, John. Helen West, one of the best foreign correspondents in the business. She's no fool, but she's rushing in where angels, if they had any sense at all, would very definitely fear to tread. It's liable to cost her her life, and that's only the beginning of our story. Mutual Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis's production of the Mutual Radio Theater. Our story, North from Marrakech, by Alan Caillou. Our stars, Hans Conry, Antoinette Bauer, and Len Berman. In spite of all reports to the contrary, there are still some young people around today who want to get married. I like that. Of course, there are sometimes obstacles to be overcome, even before you start out. Well, hi there, Virgil. Hi, Norma. Oh, what beautiful flowers. What are they, roses or something? Uh, Yes. Is Helen home? No. Oh. Well, maybe I can come in and wait for her. Sure, Virgil. Anything you say, come on in. Hey, that's a great fire she's got going there. It's cold tonight. Oh, is it? I didn't know. I'm always warm. You want a drink? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Is she going to be along? Who? Helen, Norma. Oh, Helen. Yeah, I guess so. Well, how long, Norma? Um, she figured a couple of weeks. I'm house-sitting for her. A couple of weeks? Yeah, she left yesterday. I have to feed the budgie and water all those house plants. Oh, my. Where'd she go this time? Oh, a place called Morocco. Uh... That's in um, Marrakesh. Norma, I know where Marrakesh is. But oh. What's she doing there? I mean, I came to propose to her. You know what a proposal is, Norma? It's kind of old fashioned these days. Oh, sure, I know. I'm not dumb. I get them all the time. <laughs> Cheers. Marrakesh. Oh, I need this drink. Uh, she went there to interview a man named Abdul Krim. He's going to take over all of North Africa and give the Western world a really bad time. Norma, Abdul Krim has been dead for nearly 20 years. 
Yes, that's what she said. Where does Abdul Krim come into all this? Oh, oh, I remember. Well, this guy she went to interview is his grandfather's grandson. That could apply to a lot of people, Norma. Mm -hmm. Well, he's a rebel chieftain in the Rift Mountains. Wait, wait, wait. Are we talking about Hamid Krim? That's what I said, Virgil. Hamid Krim. And Helen thinks he's taking over... Hey, she's on to a very good thing. Now, why didn't I think of that? Can I use the phone, Norm? I have to call my office. Oh, sure, Virgil. You can use anything you like. You know that. Yeah. Charlie, Virgil. Listen, Helen West... You know Helen West from the opposition? Charlie, I suggest there are some things you don't know. Okay, make a note. Helen West is on her way to Marrakesh to interview Hamid Krim, grandson of the legendary Abdel Krim, and I'm going out there, too, to get that exclusive out from right under her nose. When's the next flight to Morocco, Charlie? Okay, that gives me lots of time. Have a ticket for me there at Kennedy and send a cable for me to Magda. Do you know Magda? Oh, shut up, Charlie. Tell her I'm on flight, whatever it is, and have her meet me. Great. See you. Who's Magda, Virgil? Well, now, Magda runs a thing called Unified Press in Morocco. It takes care of all us foreign correspondents. She's really very cute, and she thinks I'm fantastic. Virgil, you don't really care who you marry, do you? Well, uh, let's examine that comment. I really do have my mind set on Helen right now. Why don't you marry me instead? We'd go great together, and I'm right here, not in Morocco. Norma, I have to say it. You're a wonderful woman. Oh, I don't still... want to be a wonderful woman. I want to be a wife. Norma. Let me tell you about Helen. She's got a great face, but, well, it's the kind of face that if the body's great, too, okay, then she's terrific. You know what I mean? I got both of them going for me, Virgil. <laughs> yes, well, Norma, sometimes I think you're not as dumb as I most times think you are. But two hours from now, I have to hightail it to the airport to fly to Marrakesh. Two hours? <laughs> you want another drink? <laughs> of Morocco are a long, long way from home. They're harsh, rugged, forbidding. Nothing can live here except goats and bandits. And Helen West is blithely on her way to a rendezvous with disaster. She's not even aware of the great danger she's in. Mustafa, do you really think this decrepit old jeep is going to get us there? Oh, yes, Missy. It's very good jeep. Little time now we find in camp of Hamid Krim. Very dangerous man. He's killing everybody. Maybe he cut our throats, too. Well, frankly, I doubt that. Everybody says he's some kind of barbarous maniac, and yet if he were really so terrible, you wouldn't have agreed so readily to find him for me. Don't you think that makes sense? Uh, when we see what people like me will do for money, it is best to be sad and not think at all. This a very dangerous business, Missy, for both of us. I won't believe it, Mustafa. The great Abdel Krim fought against colonial oppression. All his sons were educated in Europe, even his brother and his brother grandsons. Hamid Krim was educated at Sandhurst Military Academy in England. He's practically a British Army officer. He cannot be the ruthless maniac he's made out to be. And that's what I want to find out about. Hamid Krim is still Berber, Missy. A Berber of the Berber states as I am. And the Berbers are the most dangerous people in the world today. Never forget that. Magda! Virgil, over here! Magda! 
Oh, my, it's great to see you again. You look fantastic. Uh, a new hairstyle, you like? Fantastic. How are you? Great. It's so good to see you, Virgil. Come over here. Unified Press Office on Sharia Bulim. Would you care for some Arak? It's all I have here. Great. So, what are you doing in Morocco, Verger? The cable said absolutely nothing. I'm looking for Helen West. You know her? Sure, I know her. But she's not in Morocco. She'd have checked with me. Cheers. Cheers. She's after an exclusive. Ah, then she would not have checked with me. With whom? Hamid Krim. What? With Hamid Karim? Yeah. She's crazy. We all know that. But she's not on her way up into the Reef Mountain to talk with him, I hope. I can only assume that she is. Oh, my Lord. Well, I guess we have to write Helen West off. A pity. She had a great future ahead of her. Stripped of all the adverse publicity he's been getting lately, how bad is he, Magda? Truly. His grandfather, Abdel Karim, was one of the most violent men in history. Hamid is far, far worse. Let me tell you just what kind of man he is. There were two French journalists here recently. They went up there to interview him, too. Now, Hamid Karim has maybe 2,000 men with him, 10 or 20,000 rifles, a lot of rocket launchers. Heavens only knows how many bazookas, and he's got seven tanks and one aircraft, and a little balanca he hijacked. Well, he took those two French journalists up in his plane, and he dropped them on Marrakesh, Virgil, from five thousand feet without benefit of parachutes. Mm. This is the man your Helen has gone to interview. But Helen is a woman, and a very attractive woman at that, so maybe she'll last a little longer. Hamid is quite a man for the ladies. But don't expect to see her again, Virgil. Ever. Just write her off. Then somehow i got to get her out of there. Impossible. There's got to be a way. Can I get help from the military? Not a chance. He's got an absolute fortress up there. And everyone knows where it is, but it's, it's really quite impregnable. And the bizarre gossip is that the Moroccan Air Force is about to mount an aerial attack on his camp and blow him sky high. When? We can't be sure. But it could be any moment now. Then I have to get up there fast, don't I? How do I do that? Well, if you've got your heart set on suicide, there is a mad American pilot in town. His name is Bendix. Aloysius Bendix. If you can find him, and if he's drunk enough, he'll fly you up to the Reef Mountains. But you need a bodyguard, too. Can I give you a name? Magda, I need all the help I can get. A man named Suleiman. He was a police inspector, but he just got fired. He's tough and knowledgeable, and he'll do anything for money. You'll need him, Virgil, if you're ever going to get out of there alive. Can I trust him? But as far as you can throw him, and he's a very heavy man. But if you give him some money up front and promise him a great deal more when you get back, if you get back, maybe it will work out. I don't know. It's a pretty small chance, Virgil. I have to take it. So, tell me where to find this Solomon. Number 32, Sharia Fulani. Okay. Thanks for the help, Magda. Virgil. Hmm? If I never see you again. You bet. So long, Magda. This is Mazda. Get a message up to Hamid Karim at once. 
Tell him there's another one on his way up there. A man named Virgil Fraser. Sometimes very easy to walk all unsuspecting into dangers that you can't walk out of quite so easily. And Helen West, a young, attractive, and very sure of herself foreign correspondent, is walking into just that kind of trouble. It's all part of the necessary business of keeping the public informed about what's going on throughout the world. Sometimes it's easy to forget that a number of good reporters have lost their lives doing just that. Mustafa, there's a man up there on, on the bluff, a man with a rifle. Oh, yes, Missy. Another one over there, you see? And over there, and over there. For half an hour now, they're everywhere around us. And listen, listen. His horses, I think. Oh, yes, many horses. Now, now I think we have very bad trouble. They tell us to get down, Missy. Better we do that, I think. Okay, but I want my equipment. My camera. I have it. Tape record. I have it. I have it. Look up. Look up. What are they trying to do? They throw the jeep over the cliff, Missy. We're lucky they don't throw us over, too. No. Oh, it was a good jeep. Come, Missy. We go with them to Hamid Krim's camp. Yes. Well, that is what we came all this way for, isn't it? But I have to admit I'm frightened now. No, no, no. Do, do not be frightened, Missy. You must not be frightened. You must have courage. Because mine is all gone. You were recommended to me, Mr. Suleiman, by Magda Esborn over at Unified Press. She said you were tough and knowledgeable and would do anything for money. Oh, how kind of her. Really a very perspicacious lady, if I may say so. She also said you'd recently been fired from the police department. I'm sure it's none of my damn business, so I won't ask why. Oh, but I insist you know, Mr. Fraser. I was treated most abominably. I was fired for corruption. For corruption, Mr. Fraser. And I must postulate, sir, that it is not customary anywhere in the civilized world to dismiss a respected police officer for such a trifle. <laughs> corruption, indeed. It is merely that I was getting bribes my commanding officer thought should be his. And what shall I do now? I have twelve children. I must eat three times a day, and I have no money. Eat three times a day? Oh, you mean feed. Precisely, Mr. Fraser. I have to feed on them three times a day like a good father. And the little beasts are always hungry. Money, Mr. Fraser, it is always a question of money. An honest man simply cannot live without the bribes he has become accustomed to. Uh, yes. Well, Magda suggested I might hire your services as sort of... Uh... I don't know, guide and bodyguard, I suppose, for a trip into the Rift Mountains. Ah. Ah. Uh, there is nothing in the Rift Mountains to interest a foreign journalist, Mr. Fraser, except... Except Hamid Krim, yes. I want to go to his camp. Did Magda tell you also that Hamid Krim's men murdered my father? No. No, she didn't. And if that means... Yet they attacked my village, Mr. Fraser. And my father, my four brothers, two uncles, and seven women of my family. They were all killed in the massacre. A village called Sarit. Remember the name. Sarit. I'm sorry, Solomon, I didn't know. Well, thanks for the drink, anyway. Oh, wait, wait, Mr. Fraser. Uh, your business with uh, Hamid Trim is to his advantage? Probably not. Ah, uh, then, given sufficient... Uh, Impetus, I will take you there. Impetus? Money, Mr. Fraser, is not, as you Westerners say, the root of all evil. 
It is merely one of its most beautiful flowers. Oh. Well, I thought 50 bucks a day for two or three days would be about right. If I were to parade my 12 starving children before you, Mr. Fraser, I am convinced you would reflect on the insufficiency of that offer. Come, look at their bloated bellies. Solomon, I already saw some of your damn kids. They don't have bloated bellies. They're just fat. A hundred a day, then, plus a sizable bonus when we return. Done. Okay. Tell me where I can find a man named Aloysius Bendix, a pilot. Captain Bendix? Ah, at this time of day, Mr. Fraser, uh, Captain Bendix will be in the bazaar getting drunk. Well, let's go find him, shall we? I'd like you to know, Hamid Krim, I'm very upset just now. Oh, really? And why should that be? Because your men threw my jeep over a cliff. I'll never get back to Marrakesh without it. How true. But you won't need it now, Miss West. You came looking for me, you found me, and now you will stay a while. Long enough for an interview, yes. Oh, yes, the interview. It will be well publicized. Very well, yes. In that case, I agree. The more people learn of my bland, Miss West, the more they will stand in fear of me. And fear is a very powerful weapon that I know how to use. But I must leave you now. I'm expecting a visit from the Moroccan Air Force, and I must look to my defenses. We will talk again tonight. Meanwhile, you are free to make yourself at home in the village. We Berbers are known for our hospitality. And there's an execution you may want to watch, to photograph for your gutter press. But remember that, like this miserable Mustafa here, you are my prisoner. Don't try to escape. We are also known for our marksmanship, too. Hassane! Hamid, your sheikh! Why should I want to escape, Hamid Krim? I came here to get your philosophies down on tape. When I've done that, I'll worry about getting home. Not before. <laughs> you are a very aggressive young woman, aren't you? And it isn't my only virtue, I assure you. <laughs> we shall consider your virtue tonight. All right, Mustafa. Let's take a look at the village. I want to get some shots before we lose the light. I don't like it, Missy. This is a very dangerous man. I don't think we get out of here alive. Nonsense. It's all just bluster. Ah! What was that? Hamid Krim said an execution, Missy. Oh, my God. Listen. Isn't that a plane? This is a plane. I think they shoot it down now. Better you have camera ready, Missy. Captain Bendix, they hit us. Yeah, yeah. We took a couple of shots there. Everybody all right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, at least we found the camp. A lot of very angry men there, Mr. Fraser. With guns. Now, don't worry about it. We're coming into the valley now. A little valley called Wadi Minfa. Okay. That's where I'm going to drop you off. You have maybe two hours climbing to Hamid Krim's camp. Hey, Captain Bendix, your fuel tanks. Well, what about them? The gauges say empty. Hell, those gauges, they haven't been working for five years. We got plenty of gas. Okay, fasten your seat belts. We're going down. <laughs> what am I saying? We don't have any seat belts. Okay, everybody out. I'll be here tomorrow at first light. I don't really believe you'll be, but the deal's a deal. You got any idea just how you're going to get your girlfriend out of there? I wish I had. Lay it off the cuff, I guess. Well, I volunteer to help you, except for one thing. Oh, and what's that, Bendix? <laughs> I got more sense. I'll see ya.
That looks like a long, hard climb, doesn't it? Never mind, Mr. Fraser. Think of the great reward that is waiting for us at the end of it. All those angry men with their guns. And here they come now, Mr. Fraser. But they're not firing. That is absolutely correct. It means they want us alive. And shall I tell you what they might do to us? No, I'm trying very hard not to think about that. Here's the fourth act of North from Marrakesh. Well, Miss West, did you photograph that execution? No, I did not. Oh, well, I can easily arrange another one for you if you wish. Do you really want the whole world to see that sort of thing? Yes, I told you, and you don't listen, do you? I told you, the more people who fear me, the better I like it. They must learn that I am not a man to be trifled with. That this is the fate of anyone who stands in my way. Oh, come. We sit here on the sand and you may interview me. Photographs? Tape recorder? Of course. I want my ambitions to be known to the whole of your damned western world. Okay, we're recording. First. Hamid Krim, will you repeat that last comment, please? I want the western world to know that anyone who stands in the way of my ambitions will be removed. And what are your ambitions, Hamid Krim? First, the conquest of my own country, Morocco. Then the subjugation of Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt. By force of arms. You are a very foolish young woman if you believe there is any other way. Then you're talking about all-out war. In the desert, yes. We Berbers are very good in the desert. In the cities, by more devious methods... By selective assassination. By selective assassination? What do you mean exactly? I mean the present rulers and their minions who are all pawns of Western imperialism. From Marrakesh all the way to Cairo. I have more than a hundred names all marked down for assassination. For the record, Hamid Krim, can we call that murder? Call it what you will, dear lady. Death has as many names as it has forms. As my army grows, my power grows. And so will my list of victims till there is not one man left who would dare stand against me. There is one war in the lexicon of all great rulers that must never be forgotten. And that war is kill. Hamid Krim, will you tell me how many men you have under your command? No comment. I will say only that when my illustrious grandfather, Abdel Krim, died, in exile, mark you, he still had 400,000 adherents to his cause. Soon I will have far, far more. And then... I... Well, Mr. Virgil Fraser, I do believe. Virgil... Helen, thank God I found you. I made Krim... You know my name. I was expecting you, Mr. Fraser... I'm kept well informed about the machinations of my enemies. Enemies? I'm not your enemy, Hamid Krim. I just came here to, uh, well, to help Helen out with her interview. Virgil, I don't need help. Then sit down, Mr. Fraser. Where were we, Miss West? You were saying you'd kill anyone who stood in your way. Oh, yes, of course. And about that, what about those two French reporters? What French reporters? Shut up, darling. Why did you murder them, Hamid Krim? Why? Because I thought they might perhaps be spies. As both of you might well be, too. Wait, wait, I have to flip the tape. Hold the thought. Okay, off the top. Virgil? Why did you murder those two French journalists, Hamid Krim? All they wanted was an interview from you. I executed them, Mr. Fraser, because I thought they might be spies. As you might well be, too. And at the moment, for the record, I'm wondering what I should do with you. I might have you buried in the sand up to your necks for the children to throw stones at. You're forgetting one thing, Hanukkah. Oh? And what is that? You said it yourself. You want the whole world to hear your philosophies, as it will. You can't afford to kill us. And is that what you are counting on? Yes. I thought as much. 
Your manner has been arrogant and offensive ever since you first came here. Yes, I want to see that tape made public, but I can easily send it down to my friends at Unified Press. It does not need your physical presence. He's got a point there, Virgil. In the morning, I will decide what is to be done with you both. Tonight, Mr. Fraser, you will sleep here under guard. Miss West will sleep with me. I can't permit that, Ahmed Krim. You can't permit? You have no say in the matter at all. She is my prisoner. And I do with my prisoners as I wish. And in her case... That's the Moroccan Air Force, Hamid Krim. Come to bomb you the hell and gone out of here. I know. There is a cave a hundred yards behind you. Take this west there. I send the guard with you. Ali, from our home. Suleiman, Mustafa, come with us. Okay, we should be safe here. This cave's a natural, natural air raid shelter. Suleiman, our guard. You think he speaks English? No, Mr. Fraser. A mountain man, which is to say, an ignoramus. Okay, when I belt him in the gut, you grab that machine pistol. And then we'll all get the hell out of here. Please, Mr. Fraser, allow me to handle this delicate matter for you. You see, Mr. Fraser, there is nothing in the world more formidable than the anger of a righteous man. And if you would like me to cut his throat, I would be most happy to oblige. Really, very happy indeed. No, no he's out cold. Suleiman, can you and Mustafa guide us down the mountainside in the dark? Virgil, where to? We can't just walk out of here. It's 200 miles to Marrakesh. There's a plane coming for us at dawn. A place called Wadi Minfa. Wadi Minfa? It means... The Valley of Dried Out Bones. Watch out, rock slide. Dear Lord, I nearly fell. It's an awfully long way to fall. Where's Mustafa? He's not with us anymore. Do not worry about Mustafa, Miss West. He knows where Wadi Minfa is. He will catch up. Will they come looking for us, Solomon? Oh, yes, if they survive that bombing. But this is a very large mountain, Miss West, and they will not know where to look. It will be for them like looking for a haystack with a needle. <sighs> and we are there. What do you mean for? Better you sleep now till the plane arrives. I will keep watch. <laughs> Mr. Fraser, Mr. Fraser, wake up. Uh-huh. We have trouble. We have adversity calling towards us on its hands and knees. Uh-huh. A man out there. And where there is one, there may be many others. Oh, my God. Oh, what a lovely Shh, morning. Shh, we've been discovered. Oh, no. Wait. He, he, it's Mustafa. And he's been hurt. I will go to help him. Virgil, I'm scared. Yes, me too. Are you sure this plane is coming for us? I'm hoping... He's been shot, Mr. Fraser. He's dying. Miss, Miss West, is she here? I'm here, Mustafa. What happened? I I, I betrayed you. I told, told Hamid Kring that plane come for you this morning to Wadi Minfa. I... I'm hoping, hoping for a reward. But Hamid Krim become very angry, and he, he shot me dead and leave me there. All night long, I crawled down mountain to tell you my revenge. Mustafa, uh, tell us what? Wait, my dying breath, Hamid Krim. I think you may be come here. Soon, looking for you. Very angry man. Oh, God. He is dead, Miss West. We will leave him here for the jackals to feed on. They too will die, and the vultures will feed on them. 
and when the vultures die and fall to earth as they must, it will be a turn of the ants to feed on them. It is what is called in your language ecology. And I brought him here. Hey, that's Bendix. Virgil! Virgil, they're on the mountains. Horses! Yes, it is Hamid Krim and some of his men. Bendix! Come on in, damn you! Hamid Krim and four men. Do not worry, Miss West. I have a good machine pistol. Come on. Now hurry it up, will ya? Helen, get up there, fast. Come on, honey, move your Solomon, tail. come on. No, I wait for them to get within range, Mr. Fraser. Are you crazy? Get aboard. Yes, something. It is better you take off now, Mr. Fraser, without me. There is something I must do now. Solomon, get on board. Have it, Krim. Remember, Sarit. Sarit, my village. Remember the name. to wonder what a submachine gun can do in the hands of a capable man. You okay, Suleiman? No, he's been shot. Okay, Suleiman, grab my arm. You think, Mr. Freeman, this is the first time my poor body has been the recipient of barbarians' bullets? No, I have had in my time a nemiety of them. Nemiety? Suleiman, why don't you just speak English like the half-civilized savage you are? Okay, boys and girls, let's go. Yeah. Hey, well, some kind soul, you want, want to pass me the bourbon bottle that's under the seat there? Me first, Captain Bendix. Two things, Helen, in order of their relative importance. Do we still have the tape? And will you marry me? Yes, Virgil. And yes. Mutual Radio Theater is brought to you five nights a week at this time. Tonight's original radio play, North from Marrakesh, was written by Alan Caillou and produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Leonard Nimoy. Our stars were Hans Conry, Antoinette Bauer, and Len Berman. Featured in the cast were Peggy Weber, Jeffrey Bacon, Richard Peel, and Alan Caillou. The Mutual Radio Theater theme was composed by Nelson Riddle. John Harlan speaking. Associate Director of Mutual Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollefson. Mark Trella is Production Supervisor. Recording Engineer, Hal McDonald. Music Editor, Lee Ringette. The Elliott Lewis production of Mutual Radio Theater is a presentation of CVI. CBS.